when he did show up to court, uh, he did show up and he was smiling, kind of joking around, feeling, looking jovial. I mean, it was enraging to watch, and I'm sure probably doing it for that purpose uh, of of wanting to, to to get that that rise out of people. I mean, is that you know just kind of where this gets to at some point with some people, where the only pleasure they get is other people's pain? Because I can only imagine, you know, obviously just bystanders looking at this and and not having any personal connection to Harmony or that family whatsoever. But the people who did know or know of Harmony, as we know, there wasn't a ton. Um, and, and, and we're closer there and, and, and missed a lot of signs. Um, you know, that's gotta be utterly enraging, but it, it's all seems to be so he can get that, that little bit of joy uh, out of it. Is that, you know, why we're seeing that sort of behavior out of him? Probably. And you hit another key phrase right there too, why he was doing it, mm -hmm. um, for him. Yeah. And when you're in the state of mind, every single action you take is completely self-serving. No empathy towards other, no context, no, no, no desire to even have a context about your, yeah. your behaviors and the impact on others completely incapable of it. There's part of, part of the addiction part of it is they go start to go into massive survival mode mm -hmm. and not just because of the drugs, but because of the state that their lack of income and every, I mean, they're living out of a car. Yeah. So all these things put you also <laughs> not just in the throes of addiction, but now you're in throes of survival mode, yeah. which is ex becomes extremely self-centered, extremely self-reliant and resilient with only this amount of capacity of your brain working, which again, it makes you really yeah. self-centered. So all these things are extremely compounding and negative on the, on everything in life and everyone around you in life. What was your reaction to some of the other testimony that we saw this week from the uncle, from the CPS worker, um, and several others uh, that, that talked about, you know, seeing harmony with a black eye, uh, knowing uh, that Adam beat literally, I, I, I don't have the exact quote in front of me, but it was very explicit of to something to the effect of, I, you know, I beat the shit out of her. I around the room. I, it was something really horrible. Um, but it was, um, it was, people were aware of this more than I think a lot of us thought I, she wasn't so much in this bubble where absolutely no one this, knew this little girl existed. They did. And some things were reported, but the system kind of lost track of her, uh, because you know, they, and if you're trying to hide somebody, uh, and they're dead, you're not necessarily going to be giving the correct address or any address, which they didn't have. They had a car. Um, the, the fact that, that they were able to go on for three years without anybody really truly noticing that, that she was gone or for the system who she was in their system to catch up with this. That's disturbing and not surprising, but, uh, disturbing that it's like, whoa, well, we don't have the right address. Good luck, Harmony. I mean, that's that's kind of how our system works, is if we can't get to it at the very bare minimum or unless somebody's really honest to look into this, it's like every child for themselves, it seems. We've said it each week on yeah. this case. Mm -hmm. I'm right with you. The system totally failed her on this one, and I don't know the answer to this one. You know, how do we fix a system which, and here's at the root of, of, I think, the real challenge of fixing this system is you're asking – now, granted, the people that are volunteering to be foster parents and, and do righteous things for children in the system are, are angels on earth. There's no mm -hmm. doubt. But there's so few of them because here's what you're consciously inviting into your life if you're doing it for those reasons. You're inviting unhealthy chaos. Mm -hmm. Because remember, you're not just going to be dealing with a child you're saving. You're going to be dealing with the Adam Landry's. Mm -hmm. You're going to be dealing with the mess uh, of a system. And if the system hasn't put in protections and safeguards and a good process for the people volunteering to do this, the system's going to crumble because people – remember, the, it goes back to the key motivations of all of us that we've talked about before too. We want to feel safe. Yeah, and if the system doesn't allow those that are volunteering to save children to feel safe, the system's not going to work. Yeah, I mean, that's so a I big that's thing. That's what we really need to focus that, on. That is a very big thing. I think that that is is missed sometimes. And yeah, I completely agree. People who are taking them in, uh, angels on earth, uh, we need more good people that are, are able and willing to do that. But yes, they do subject themselves then to these sort of characters. And if you have a, a volatile addict type character that views that you are in the wrong, you have my child, I want my child back. And it's not necessarily that this was so much the case, 
but you have that sort of thing and, and, and they, it's not hard to figure out where someone is these days or, 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 or where someone lives or get an address for somebody. You're sitting, you're a sitting duck, uh, for some of these people. If they, you know, they view the system as wronging them and, and you're doing good and they want, I mean, it, it can be very scary for people in those sort of situations, which then very much discourages people from raising their hand and going, I have a good home. I have the capability to do this, but you know what? I care about the well-being of my family too. And I don't want to subject myself to it. Um, it it's another piece of this, another piece of the broken puzzle of our system. A hundred percent. And out of everything that we've covered over the, over our time together, mm -hmm. the, 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 the two things and the two areas that I think hopefully people will start paying more attention to to start working on this problem, it's the system for children that are being abused. So that system, as well as kind of a, a an offshoot potential offshoot and byproduct that that we talked about last week, also is the the serial rapist mm -hmm. and who they target, because it's basically the disenfranchised that start with harmony. I mean, yeah. so I think we did that last time is it play that forward. If she had lived in this kind of household, what would eventually ended up with harmony? Yeah. She would have been under assault by society, not in our, not, not the healthy part of society, but, but through this, this horrible dark place in our society that would have tried to subjugate her and yeah. abuse her in other ways. And so that is the massive thing that we need to work on. Yeah. It's a sad story. I mean, all around and you can play it out and go, you know, let's say she stayed alive and that was the care. I mean, it would have been a life of trauma and abuse. And, you know, honestly, I mean, it's a horrible thing, but you know, what's better for someone who doesn't have a choice in that matter would it have been continuing to to be you know, subjugated to all that, um, you know, or, or 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 passing on? I mean, it's it's horrible. I mean, it, it's horrible to think about like that. Like, what is better in a situation? Because there is no right or wrong answer to that. It's just some people are are are, stu are put into these these scenarios with no choice of their own, and there's not a lot that we do to to rescue people out of them. Unfortunately. Uh, even when the signs are there, we have to wait till it gets really bad. Yeah. Well, I'm the glass half full on everything kind of guy. Sure. So in in situations like this, uh, all I can do is is thank that beautiful soul, Harmony, for bringing light to this case mm -hmm. because it brings attention to massive issues. And hopefully by by her pain, uh, others will hopefully survive yeah. uh, and, come, and come through it because – that that's the only to me that's the only justice that can be really yeah. done here is that through her sacrifice others might survive and live hopefully I, yeah completely agree hey it's tony bruski if you like the podcast be sure to like subscribe and press that bell so you don't miss any of our updates on the cases we're following for you right here at the hidden killers podcast and true crime today and thanks